And it is time. Finish this. Let's play. In a weird order that I just uploaded it in. Like with 10,000 suicide missions in between. And another Mass Effect 2 Let's Play in between. Uh, Miranda, I killed a dame for a dam at the dam to cure. <laughs> Let's play. But yeah, we got uh, like three or four more parts of Visit Anderson apartment. The Citadel DLC coming up. That's gonna be now. Finish of Mass Effect 3. Then I will go all the way back to play Mass Effect 1 for the first time. Shepard. Admiral, how are you holding up? Day by day, Commander. Yeah. Hackett sent me a message about this apartment. I want you to have it. Take it off my hands. Are you serious? You need a place that's yours. Somewhere to recharge, clear your head. Kaylee wanted us to settle down there. Thing is, the longer I'm on Earth, the less I want to leave. And I want as few loose ends out there as possible. Like I said, you'd be doing me a favor. That's very generous. It's practical. We need you in the best shape possible. Rested. Oh. Focused. If you say so. But screen. Thank you. And make yourself at home, damn it. It's yours now. I'm sure I can manage. Okay. Oh, it is bad. I've been meaning to do that for a while. I'll talk to you soon. Screen quality is bad. Yes, sir. So long, Admiral. Anderson out. Damn the screen quality. What? Oh, explore apartment. That's all we gotta do here. I want my music a little bit louder. I haven't played your game for like one month almost. I'm a hell of a YouTuber now. It's official. There ain't too much else to play at the moment anyways, in my opinion. I'm still waiting for Fallout London. And as I turn up the music. No music. Is there something? Hey there. Where are you? Okay. I have your new questions here. As a leader, do I ever feel that the end justify the means? Spirit of law over word of law. I'm not going to touch that with a ten-foot pole, but I think I know what you're after. You're referring to the way I, um, arranged to have the Normandy released to Commander Shepard before the Battle of the Citadel. I'm not sure how valuable hindsight is to the military. Obviously, it worked out for the best. Without the Normandy and Commander Shepard free to do what they needed to do, what we needed them to do, Saren might have taken the Citadel. I think it's clear what a different galaxy this would be if that had happened. I did what I had to. If I had been wrong, I would have gladly accepted the repercussions. The real trick is... never being wrong. <laughs> if you're looking for more action and less philosophy in these notes, let me know. <laughs> uh, that was for good. That was good stuff. Another one. Sure. Shepard? Even more rare. 
can't find the perfect, perfect place. Play those audio logs. A few months ago, I had a chance to sit down with one of Earth's most decorated soldiers, Admiral David Anderson. He was kind enough to answer my questions and talk about his career. Today, the Admiral is on Earth, leading the defense of our home against the Reapers. We have no communication with him or any soldiers on Earth, but we can't forget what they're doing for us. Tonight's show is dedicated to all of the soldiers out there, fighting and dying to keep us safe. Admiral Anderson, today marks the 30th anniversary of the N7 program. Can you describe your first day of training in this now famous program? The Interplanetary Combatives Training Program is all business from day one. How so? We're given basic gear, then separated and stranded on an asteroid with no nav data. The test ends when the last person runs out of oxygen. Sounds daunting. What happens to the ones who run out of air first? Out of the program. The best N7s can survive alone, but work together to survive even longer. Uh, that's very impressive, Admiral. Deep space survival training. Oh, that has to be so difficult. All of it would take such strength of character. Well, just plain strength. But then you seem like a strong person. I'm sorry. Is there a question in there? <laughs> well, does the program make the man? Or do you think you were born for this? It's a bit of both, I suppose. Every soldier reaches a point in their career, sometimes more than once, when they are asked to give more than they ever thought they could. That moment is the test. I've seen men and women, almost sure to fail, persevere long past the point of breaking. That experience changes them. Others, with all the gifts and abilities, fail in that moment. Sometimes they pick themselves up and carry on. Sometimes they're just done. What about you? What was your moment? I've had a few. None of which I'd like to share. But, uh, I think the toughest tests are still ahead of me. What makes you say that? Call it a hunch. Soldier's intuition? Mm. Something like that. Do you trust your intuition? I mean, do you follow your heart over your mind? <laughs> well, <laughs> it depends on the day. No, I... I suppose if I were to be honest, I do trust my instincts. The problem is, war isn't orderly, and the enemy is never predictable. Even the most experienced veteran is going to find themselves in situations they haven't trained for. In those instances, and there's more than I'd like to admit, your instincts are the only thing keeping you alive. That, and the men and women you're fighting beside. But soldiers are only as good as their leader, isn't that true? Yeah. A good leader can make an okay squad great. A bad leader... Well... War tends to make examples of them. What makes a good leader, then? Hmm. A good leader is someone who values the life of his men over the success of the mission, but understands that sometimes the cost of failing a mission is higher than the cost of losing those men. That's a terrible line to have to walk. Yes, it is. But war is a terrible thing. Thank you for your time, Admiral. Thank you. The remainder of this interview was to take a more personal look at Admiral Anderson's life. It wasn't finished when the Reapers invaded. We can only hope that the Admiral and the soldiers under his command survive to tell us the rest of their stories. I'm Kalisa Al Jelani. Thank you for watching. This game just near journalists so well, and I didn't know I'm just gonna sit now for 20 minutes of Anderson dialogue, but that's what we're gonna do here. Nice painting. I need to find the perfect spot for the audio, the sound crisp and clear. Oh, it's fine. I got a few minutes. First contact war? Yeah. I was there. My first real combat. First for a lot of us. I remember one night early in the war, strapped to my seat as our transport approached the LZ. 
Everyone was dead silent. Just the sound of breathing. Good men. I trained with all of them. We were always joking and horsing around, but not this time. Just the rattle of the shuttle. And that heavy breathing. Everyone was thinking the same thing. We're off to fight alien invaders. Aliens? Think about that. We all grew up wondering what was out there. If we were alone in the universe. Now we knew. We weren't alone. And we were in trouble. So there we were. About to face an enemy as different and unknown as we could imagine. I knew I had to say something to keep the men relaxed. So I turned to the soldier beside me, Hendrix, I think, and asked him how his mother was doing. Fine, he said. Why? Because I heard your mama so ugly the Marines thought she was a Torian. Almost shot her. <laughs> I got a few smiles. Then Hendrix turned to me and said, Hell, Anderson, I heard it was a picture of your mama that started this goddamn war in the first place. Scared the Torian shitless. Everyone had a good laugh at that. And the boys fought great that night. Sometimes that's all it takes. A joke, a pat on the back. Just a little reminder that everything's gonna be okay. Damned. They're actually selling Anderson. That's the perfect leader. Very well. Very outspoken. Next. <laughs> what was I talking about? Early days, right? People ask why I joined the military. Everyone talks about honor, duty, sure. But that's... never the whole truth. It's a hundred little things that add up to commitment. I joined because of a dog. Yeah. A dog. This patchy, mean son of a bitch that used to bark at me every day on my way to school. He'd snarl and I'd start running. Get the hell out of me. I was just a kid. I remember being in a bad mood one Angry, I can't recall why. When that dog started in on me, I snapped. Started barking right back. We both kept at it until we had nothing left. Dog never bothered me again. Why'd I join the military? Hmm. Sometimes you just gotta howl to make things right. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know about that one. That ships and medals. Is that a weapon or ship? Now oh, that's normally right, maybe. No, is it a sword? The hell? No, 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 no. Get a lot. Customize, really? I don't know. Why not just get been at sushi place? Oh, me. Joker. Oh yeah, that's the mission. Bathroom looks good. Kitchen. What do we have here? Standard kitchen. Ah, it's a, I don't think I can do anything here. Maybe later, maybe I can buy more. Listen to you. That's the sprint. What? Ah, music. Right. Audio locks. Oh, look at that. What do I have with me? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nova. Captain Nova here. Do. Need to spawn more shower in here. Then it's perfect. Look at that thing. That's cool. I mean, definitely looks ten times better than my apartment. Second marriage for my parents. They were almost 50 by the time they had me. 
My mother worked shifts, so my father would often take me to the base. While he worked, I watched transport ships and fighters take off. Worked his whole life around space travel, my father. But he never left Earth. Not for a day. He was a good man. But that's just a side note. Don't put that in. Who is it, Kaylee? Uh, yes, I need to take that. I hope this is what you're after. I'll get to the more interesting N7 stuff next time. Oh, let me buy. No, it's Turian experience. The Turians? Hmm. Um, uh, I might not always see eye to eye with the politics of the individual, but I have a great respect for the Turian military. Any Alliance soldier lucky enough to take part in their training programs will certainly be better for it. Their precision, skill, and discipline come together in a way that's second to none. Not that I'm faulting our own people or training. It's just that after fighting Torians in the first contact war, years later, I had the opportunity to observe and train on Palavan. It was a turning point for me. And I would encourage any soldier to try it. It's a unique experience to put yourself in the squad of a Turian commander. My commander was an uncompromising bastard named Bartox Oryx. If you can find him, just ask how the platoon I commanded was trounced in his strategy game. Humbly. But I've used what I learned that day many times. The xenophobes will have their say. But I think it's vital that we do more of this kind of cross-species training. There you go. And if you do find General Oryx, let me know. I owe him money. <laughs> okay, enough of that. Damn. Many audio logs. What's this? The guest room? One more. Even reflection this game. Oh, there's the dirty, dirty shower. What's the guest room then? You asked me to talk about the SSV Normandy. The Normandy SR-1. As commander of the Tokyo, I was consulted on the Normandy's design and on board for her initial training exercises. The average person probably doesn't know that the Normandy was a joint project with the Torians. Acting CEO Eli Zander was no diplomat. She ran out of patience with Torian posturing and politicking during construction. The chief architect of the Drive Corps, Octavio Tatum, and his team of Torian engineers were in the CIC for final training exercises. Tempers flared when Xander pushed the limits of the stealth system, waiting to vent the IES well past what Tatum was comfortable with. I tried to calm the situation, but it still ended with the Torian scientists in shackles and a human Torian fistfight at Cora's den later. Funny now, when I first laid eyes on the Norman, she was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Day after that training run, Admiral Wright found me on the bridge. She's yours, he said. Can't trust her to Xander. Send me a list of crew from the Tokyo you'd like, and prep for your first mission. Short command, thanks to Saren. Still, one of the highlights of a long career. Definitely a beautiful ship. Okay, let's get to Joker. And we should meet a lot of people on the way. The only person I don't think we're gonna meet is Said. Door open. Oh. And the music is gone. Damn, that was weird. Transition from 100 to 0. Oh, it was 50, 60. Something of that anyway. That's what it turned it up to be. Oh, neon light. That look good. Have a reshade on if you're wondering. Should make the game look a little bit better. I could try if I find a good spot for the difference. That looks with all reshade and how it looks with one. Or multiple ones since I have some interesting reshades in my collection. Let's see if I get a cutscene immediately. Oh, I just popped into the cab. Not everyone survived my let's play, so not everyone will be here. 
the cutscene immediately. VIP pause. Ah, Commander Shepard, your table is ready. <laughs> Shirtless choker. Uh, what a comedian. Let's see, position one, does my screen spin? Yeah. Damn it. Oh, yeah, that's making me spin. 3D first. So. Fucking trippy. Not that cool. Okay. I won't go through too many then. And me one better colors and lightning is what I used. Dying light photorealism is normally always good looking. Damn it, Patrick. Oof. It is good looking. But it's so dark. Ah, it's heavy. It's heavy. What else do we have that I can show off one more? Mass Effect mods, photorealism, so many photorealism stalkers should not look that good. I still put it on in there. It's screen heavy. Stalker misery, we shed is that. Damn it! Stop it! Okay, and now without reshade, and then I'm gonna go back into the reshade. No, I'm just pressing but it looks actually pretty good. Yeah, I mean one color one, it doesn't change too much. Most research just uh, a slight color improvement. Colors to be more full and rich. I don't want to talk to you. I can't decide. It all looks great. Ah, oh, fuck. Mm. I'm gonna leave a little bit of action in here. God, I'm sorry. Looks so good in this game, the Turians too, but in Mass Effect Andromeda, they just gave Fasari one head model and it's just the worst thing ever. Every uh, Asari looks bad and but then Andromeda, look how cool she is looking with her. Are those eyes closed? No. What else do we have here? Joker. How are your eyes looking, girl? Fabulous. Okay. Hey Shepard, not bad, huh? The sushi place is serious, like French guy at the door serious. Only had to save the galaxy twice to get a table here. You seen the line outside? But here I am, drink in hand. Best pilot in the universe and a rock star. <laughs> Any news from the Normandy? Ah, oh, you know, maintenance stuff. It's hard knowing a bunch of strangers are poking around in my ship. I, I mean, your ship. Oh, shit. The best thing we can do right now is Parker and let the techs do their work. <sighs> yeah, you're right. Maybe an oil change, space tire rotation. Right. Trust me, it'll do her some good. Oh, I trust you. Not sure about those shifty aerospace engineers. Always stealing the silverware. Like I'm hearing a little bit too much echo. This is a vacation. Eh, no, I don't like it either. It's not easy to hand the ship over to somebody else. I just don't want anybody touching her but me. That that sounded a little weird. Hmm, not from you. Ouch. So, Commander, your email said it was important. What's up? My email? I'm here because I got a message from you. The hell? I, I didn't send anything. Commander! Excuse me, sorry. Lion's business. Commander, this is urgent! Oh, come on, we haven't even gotten the appetizers yet. Commander Shepard, I'm Staff Analyst Maya Brooks. Alliance, excuse me. Alliance Intelligence. There are people trying to kill you. No shit. Yeah, I think he's aware of that. <sighs> no, I don't mean Cerberus and the Reapers. I mean other people, new people, they're, it's, <sighs> someone is hacking your account, comm channels, personal records, they're targeting you specifically. She is glossy, fish eyes, damn it. Big mistake. Oh man, there's the angry face. From the top, what do you know? Excuse me, you don't have a reservation. Good evening, ladies and 
gentlemen. Tonight's performance is brought to you by random acts of violence. Yeah, that's random. Get down. Man, I love show business. Spread out, boys. Find me Shepard. Good thing to blind. Stay there. I'm coming. Joker? Ow, my pancreas. Hey! Damn it. Got one, sir. Find the crew. I'm going after her. Find the crew. Got it. Hey! Oh. Good. I forgot how to take down myself. You used me as bait? Go. You used me mm. as bait? I did. Come to Vanguard in there. I forgot which short buttons I had. I got you. No boy. Hang on. Yeah, damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Not a good start. Can I? No, I don't have mats. And I'll aim. I'll aim. I could just do this. No, I can't do this. Damn it. Oh yeah, good warm up round. Hey, buddy. Early button again. Damn it. Yeah. No. Yeah. Good start. I hear you. I hear you say, "Don't shoot me." But I shoot. <laughs> Looking too good, but here we go. <clears throat> right in the chest. I feel like I'm gonna switch back from the Nova tactic. good Brooks you got hit I know I used medigel a lot of it um all of it actually I know everything is a little bit bouncy I think you used too much so can I help with anything alert CSEC I'll look for a way out something to read love it What's up, camera? Brooks. Drone. I see some sky cars across the gap. Maybe a landing pad. I'm checking the area. Transportation, no food, no laundry. Ah, oh, it's a sky car lot. Cision motors. Get a shuttle over there. I'll find a way across. Okay, right. Morning. So, um, it turns out CSEC has the whole area locked down. It's gonna be a tiny bit tricky to get you a shuttle. Keep at it, Brooks. Oh, also, stay off your calm. Well, except for me. It's hacked. That's probably how they found you. Who are these guys? I don't know. But they really don't seem to like you. This area is on yeah, I'm sensing that. Security alert. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, okay. There's actually no window here. I thought there's a window there. That's why I shot. What's up, bro? Have some ammo for me? No? Not too bad. I'm gonna cut it here, probably. Let's see how far we are into it. Perfect. Peace out.